So, and if you're wondering, if you don't already have access to migration to new worlds, which I know some of you don't, um, you can get access. And uh, that's that's the email address that I think maybe you should note down if because um, that's what you're going to need to contact if you want to get access to this resource for your institution. Um, all you need to do is get in touch with JISC via that email address and then you can see the direct URL uh, to the resource there. So I'll just leave that up if anyone wants to screen capture it or, or note down that email address. Anyway, so that's, a, that's enough housekeeping. We're going to get into the actual resource itself. Now, I should also mention that um, there are two of us here today. So, so I'm Alex. I'm one of the product specialists here. We also have the project editor for this resource uh, in the room with us today, and that's Sarah Buckman. Now, Sarah's going to be taking us through a few examples of, of really key documents that give uh, not only a, an in-depth look at some of the primary source content in this resource, but also a bit more of a, a a scope for, for what you can find and, and what your students and, and faculty will be able to find um, when, you, when you refer them to this resource. If you're looking for the different document types, the source archives, some of the thematic areas, the introduction tab is going to be the place to come to for those. So we can see a bit about some of the, the, uh, the key themes that each of the documents are indexed with, also some of the document types. And then a few more notes around uh, the editorial procedures, as well as some of the interactive tools that, um, that provide a different jumping off point into the material and also will provide context for your researchers as well. So just click into, that's the nature and scope, click into the thematic areas as well. So we can get a bit more in-depth information about these, these key themes that, that all of the primary source documents are indexed with. So let's click into departures, port conditions and organization, and we can read about that. And more importantly, in each of these key, the key uh, theme areas, we can see examples of, of, of different documents that really um, show that or showcase this theme. OK, so I'm just going to click the banner at the top here, just to head back to the home page. So, one thing I didn't do is explain a bit of background about this resource itself. So Migration to New Worlds, uh, again, it's all digital primary source material. And it's looking at the emigration of peoples from uh, Great Britain, mainland Europe, and Asia to the New World. So the New World being um, North America and Australasia during the 19th and 20th century. You know, it was a, a period of mass emigration. So it's actually a two-part collection. Part one published last November, and that's all the material you're going to be seeing at, um, today. This is all material you can get access to. But there is a second module uh, due for release in 2017 as well, which will expand this portal. So that's it from me, really. Again, just to, just to highlight for now, if you want any of the background information when you get access, it's going to be the introduction tab that you're going to be able to come to. So I'm going to hand over to Sarah Buckman now. now Sarah is the project editor for this, um, for this resource and oversaw its, its, its building, really, from, from the bricks and mortar into the, the resource that you're going to see, see today. So give us a few seconds to hand over, and uh, Sarah's going to take you through a few key documents just to give you a bit of, back, a bit of an idea to, to the types of material uh, that you can find in this resource. Okay, so bear with us. Thank you very much, Alex. Good afternoon to everybody. Okay, so as Alex mentioned, my name is Sarah Buckman. I'm the project editor for Migration to New Worlds Part 1 and Part 2, which will be released in 2017. And what I want to do with you this afternoon is just take you through a couple of really interesting and key documents. Um, Migration to New Worlds is vast, so obviously I can't cover everything, and that would take far too long, but I can at least give you some really, really interesting starting points that you can show students and faculty. So if we go up to the Documents tab up here, um, the first document that I want us to look at is um, an oath of allegiance sent to the English Crown signed by Belgian Walloons hoping to emigrate to Virginia. It's the oldest document that we've um, digitised for migration from 1621. So if we just go up to the themes and just filter it by motives and emigration. 
and we'll just filter the date column as well. So we get the earliest document. There we go. So this document is really key. Um, it's come from the National Archives um, at Kew. And it is one of the earliest round robin documents in the world. So as I said, it requested permission from the English ambassador to The Hague for a group of um, Walloon, so Huguenot uh, Protestants, to emigrate to Virginia to found a Protestant colony to escape Catholic Belgium. So as we can see from here, their names were signed in a circle and that was deliberate. So if this petition fell into the wrong hands, um, nobody could be identified as the ringleaders. Obviously, we can zoom in here and have a look at it. So what actually happened with this is the British said, oh, OK, yes, we can send you um, out to Virginia, but you have to split up. So they weren't happy with this and they did end up going on their own um, as part of the Dutch East India Company. And although their original colony failed, they did end up around the area of New York and founding sort of the first settlements around New York. So for studies of emigration, this is really a key document as a, as a key starting point, really. Okay, so I'm gonna to move to something a lot later now. So we're going to filter this list by Liverpool Record Office and just apply. and filter it by D. So we're going to jump down the list a little bit. So what I want to show you here are these results which start at this point. So these are the letter books of the Medical Officers for Health. Um, based in Liverpool, there were Dr. Duncan, Dr. Trench and Dr. Stopford Taylor. They were active for around about 1849 all the way up to 1889. So these books that we're looking at here, they cover a good 40 years of history and insight into the conditions with one of, sort of the key um, departure ports um, for the UK really, so for emigrants leaving, which is Liverpool. So if we just click into one of these and just have a quick look, the letters contain information on lodging house inspections and visits. So fines for improper board, people being kept in cellars, um, families being evicted while they were waiting for ships. We have information on the diseases and epidemics which were rife in Liverpool at the time. We have cholera, typhus, and how really they tried to stop the spread of these um, quite virulent diseases into the population at large. So if we just open one of these letter books here, we can see the images. There we go. So you can actually read through their original letters and the transcripts of their original reports. And it really is an absolutely fascinating insight into the way that an emigrant port functioned and the way that governments try to just keep, keep track of emigrants really and how they were faring and progressing and the injustices that were sort of, that happened to them really. Okay. So the third thing I want to show you is I want to jump across the pond and go to the US and I want to take you to San Francisco and have a look at the John A. Robinson papers. Now, John A. Robinson was a US Immigration Service Inspector with the Immigration and Naturalization Service. So he looked after the other end. So once the emigrants had arrived in America and into San Francisco, he would sort of police the emigrant communities. So I'm just going to do a quick search up here. There we go. So these are the journals of John A. Robinson while he was working with the US Immigration Service. And his journals contain daily accounts and case notes on behalf of the Immigration Service and his attempts really to deal with San Francisco's issues with emigration, including their prostitution problem, a lot of which related to um, Chinese, Japanese and Mexican immigrants. 
Um, they really are a fascinating insight. They document nationalities, they document names, sort of crimes, why people were possibly um, put back onto Angel Island to go home. Um, and they're an excellent example of the exploitation that could happen to newly arrived immigrants as well. And you can see down here that the collection name is highlighted. So because I've searched for the John A. Robinson papers, it's brought up every single result for that. And we can link to the next, so click through to the next document from here as well. There we go. Okay, so the final thing I want to show you today is a letter from uh, a young lad called George Massingham, who emigrated to Australia on the Netherby. The Netherby was a Black Bull Line emigrant ship. So if we go back to documents here, and we will filter this list by Maritime Museum of Tasmania. Okay, so this letter is one of my personal favourites from the collection, and it basically gives an account of the shipwreck of the Netherby on the 14th of July, 1866, as she tried to thread the needle through the Bass Strait. So that's the stretch of water of, above Tasmania, between Tasmania and Australia, which cut the journey of emigrant ships down quite considerably. But unfortunately, because of the weather conditions and tides around there, it was incredibly treacherous. And unfortunately, the Netherby got herself um, in a lot of trouble and was wrecked on King Island. And this letter basically describes how this happened and the hardship that the 452 government migrants on board uh, went through during their ordeal. It gives a very full and a very frank account. Um, it describes how these sailors saved the liquor before the food, which we always think is quite interesting. Um, everybody did manage to get aboard um, and onto King Island. So everybody was safely, safely off although she, she wrecked quite badly. Um, and it describes their 49 mile trek across the island to the lighthouse in order to be rescued, which remarkably they all were. So they all arrived safely in Australia eventually. And in fact, they arrived with one more to their party as um, a child was born on the island as well. So we'll just click into this. So you can have a look. This um, document has a transcript as well, which we can see by clicking here. And we can also put this up full screen as well for everybody to see. OK. Thank you very much for your time, everybody. And I will now hand you back to Alex. Awesome. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. No, no, you did, you did that for the first time. Yeah, really good. Awesome. I think it's probably going to be a half an hour webinar, to be honest. Hi, everyone. Um, massive thanks to Sarah for sort of giving us an insight into, you know, a, a wide range of, of really fascinating documents, really. And, and this really is just a taste of you know, the tip of the iceberg of what your researchers, your faculty and uh, your students are going to be able to find when, when they're uh, utilising this resource in their research. So what I'm going to do now is just head back to the home page and just take you through um, a bit of functionality, a bit about how it works, and then take you through a few of the interactive uh, tools that your um, your researchers and, and students might find useful for their research or maybe even members of faculty that you know are going to be teaching around this area some interactive tools that they can maybe bring to the classroom and use um, within seminars and, and even for lectures so if we just head back to the home page
Okay, so Sarah's taken us a little bit around the browsing and the searching functionality already. Um, so I'm just going to just tie up a few uh, a few other pointers around that as well. So when we click into the documents um, button at the top here, we're going to get the full documents list. As Sarah has uh, shown already, we've got these sort of key filters at the top. Again, those key themes we saw right at the start, the source of the material as well. That's really important, especially for faculty researchers and also the document type as well. So we can maybe refine by periodical. Again, we find the printed material in this uh, in this resource is going to be a really good starting point, especially for your uh, undergraduate researchers, as it is all full text searchable. So we can maybe scroll down, and if we find a document uh, that looks useful to us, all we do is click into it. Now we've seen this uh, page before as, as Sarah was showing us some material. Now this is the document details page. It's where you're going to find all the metadata. It's where you're going to be able to uh, add a document to your personal repository. So I'm going to log in up here. Oh. So you can sign up. What happened there? You can sign up for a login completely free. Your details um, don't go anywhere; they remain within the resource. And you'll get a, you'll get an email um, confirming your your sign up. And once you've signed up for this personal repository, um, you've signed up for all Adam Matthew resources. Okay, so. Again, back on the document details page, we have a thumbnail view across the top here, so we can flick, uh, if there's a lot of pages in a particular document, quickly flick through those, all the uh, metadata. You can also search within this document, so um, maybe your research is taking you to this point and you need to find a different term, you can do that. What I'm going to do is just add this to my archive. So there we are, now it's added to my personal repository. Now here's the the important part. Uh, all of the documents can be downloaded. If you have access via disk, um, all the documents can be downloaded to PDF in colour. So you can download the full document here or just download a specific image range. And also there is a citation export tool which is EndNote and RefWork compatible as well. So let's click into one of the pages here. We can take a look at this. So we can see this is actually a periodical called The Household. We can just toggle that full screen. So especially for reading newspapers, um, transcribed or manuscript material that's uh, particularly uh, illegible or difficult to read, these full um, high resolution scans are going to be really uh, make it that much easier to to get into those difficult to read documents. Um, we don't do grainy microfilm here. So it's come out of the full screen, head back to the document details page using the back button up here. So again just to recap that is um, an issue of the household periodical. You can see that source from the Tenement Museum in New York. Okay, so that's a little bit about the functionality about um, you know saving documents, downloading them to PDF, searching within them, and also citing them as well. I should also show you the advanced search at the top. We've seen the basic search bar in the top right hand corner. There is also an advanced search where you can uh, use Boolean operators to link various terms. It's words uh, proximity and stemming, particularly useful for full text materials. You can also refine by date range as well. And also some of those filters that we saw uh, within the main documents list as well. So I'm going to run a search for um, Lower East Side. Um, not going to do any uh, refining here as such. Just before I run this search for Lower East Side, 
we can see our previous searches uh, on the right hand side here and also popular searches and these popular searches are based on the indexing done by our editorial team uh, rather than other researchers so I'm going to run this search so I just wanted to show this um, collection of photographs. So we, we've seen a lot of material, particularly from the 19th century uh, and earlier actually from, from Sarah's perspective, looking at, um, I suppose, the, the motives for people uh, immigrating, um, the, the actual journeys and the conditions when they arrive. But there's, also, there's also a lot of early 20th century material in this resource looking at um, settlements or people settling in in the new world in the east coast of the united states and australasia and these photographs are, are an example of of um of immigrant communities settling on the lower east side and these uh photographs really just depict the conditions of, of what these people were living in so i'll just scroll through a few of these so we can take a look And again, if we want to download this to PDF, we download it up here. If we want to add it to our personal repository, we use this button here. Just put this one full screen. I should also say when you're browsing um, you know, collections of photos or, or a document that has a lot of pages, you can just flick between, between an original uh, image and also the thumbnails for the entire document as well. So you can just get a quick snapshot of, of everything that's in that document, really speed up the research process. Okay, and I'll just quickly give you a look at those popular searches as well that I mentioned. So they've been broken up by keyword people, ports and places, and also ships as well. Okay, so I'm going to head back to the home page and we're going to take a look at some of those interactive features now. Just before we do that, just a quick reminder, that if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to put them in uh, the chat window. I can see we've got a few questions there already. Uh, I w sorry, I, I won't go to those now, but I will uh, deal with those um, when we get towards the end, so in a few minutes' time. Actually, just before we move into the interactive features, I should also, we, we saw a few, um, a photograph collection there. We do also, uh, copy across all the visual material from the main documents list so it is all full searchable but we copy it across to a separate gallery as well and this is really useful for um, if you have members of faculty or teachers who are who are teaching on uh, migration in the 20th century or uh, social history in the US in the, in the 19th and 20th century you know these various classes that this resource is going to be really critical for um, sometimes finding visual materials either for, for blackboard pages, libguides pages, for the classroom. Um, the image gallery is going to be a really good place to come for those and download those to PDF. So just click into the visual gallery. We can also refine the image gallery by um, document type as well. So maybe posters and postcards. See what posters and postcards we have. There we have a few. And when we click into each of these images, we're going to be able to download those PDF or just see a small bit of um, metadata about that image as well.
So there we are. So let's move on to the interactive features now. So I'm going to do interactive features, talk a bit about how they're useful for not only uh, individual researchers, but uh, you know teachers and faculty and you know, faculty in the classroom. And then we'll answer some questions at the end. So we're going to get to these interactive features just through the Explore tab here few contextual tools that are going to be really useful, especially for researchers who maybe aren't that uh, au fait with this area of study. Maybe you have some history or political science or English uh, undergraduates who are just starting their dissertation or thinking about their dissertation. Um, these are going to be some really useful contextual tools uh, that are going to help them start their research. What I'm going to do is click into the inter interactive research button here. I just want to show you this migration map. Now this is an interactive tool that takes um, migration data from across the 19th and 20th century from various sources. So I'm just going to scroll down here to show you the, some of the data sources. So a lot of this is census data we can see here obtained from open access uh, government sites. And what this tool really does is it plots migration data, trends, and analyzes the breakdown of, of those uh, these movements of migration from the old to the new world into a really easy to use uh, visualization tool, really. So what we can do is we can select a destination country at the top here. So let's maybe say USA. Now we can see here um, a map, obviously United States. On the right hand side, we can see a breakdown of all the immigrants and uh, we can see the years 1820 there. So we've selected uh, a destination country. The next thing we need to do is select a year. So let's maybe pick uh, 1885. So we've destination country, USA, 1885. And we can see a breakdown of all the different immigrants, all the, the nationality of all the immigrants coming to the United States in 1885. So you can see a substantial amount coming from Germany, Great Britain, and Ireland. Also Italy. So quite a lot of European uh, migration there. And as we move it along, we can maybe move it to 1965. The demographic massively changes there. So we have a lot more coming from uh, the, the American continent, also South America, and uh, also Asia as well. Asia and the Middle East. So that is that's the full um, breakdown of of emigrants, you know, coming to a, a destination country. But we can also input a source country as well. So if I'm if I want to look at emigration from Ireland to the United States, I can do that. So I just need to find Ireland using the drop down here in source country in Europe. To find Ireland. There we are, Ireland. And then all we need to do is choose a year. So let's maybe say, um, let's say 1920. Now what we need to do here is we need to scroll down and look at the um, the line graph at the bottom here. So we can use the dra the dragger here. Uh, to move between here or we can just hover over the list so we can see the trend of, of emigrants coming from Ireland to the USA right from 1820 when the data set starts right through to well 1997 in this case so we can see that real spike there which tops out at if I can just get to the top my mouse will let me there we are 1851 you can see a massive movement of people coming from Ireland over to the USA there. Okay, so that's how to use this uh, tool a little bit. If you want any more information about the data sources, just click data sources at the top here. There we are. And I'll just quickly show you the Star of India um, ship plotting as well. So what we've done is we've tried to build, well, tried, we have built an interactive uh, map of the Star of India, which gives students uh, a feel for the ship itself and also um, an, an interactive photo tour around each of the decks. 
So you can see a bit of bio here. We'll click into the main deck and just each of these hotspots around the deck we can click stores or the cook's cabin, the gallery, carpenter's store and we can use this list on the left hand side um, some with photos we can pull that out So there we are. Again, really useful contextual tools, especially for students who um, maybe aren't that um, that well qualified in, in this, this area of study or, or just starting out on a research exercise. Okay, so that's, they're just a couple of examples. Um, as, as you well know now, you can get free access to this resource. So the best way to get to know these interactive tools and see whether they're applicable for maybe PhD students, master students, or, or even undergraduates who, who you know are, are currently undertaking research in this area, um, really do encourage them to, to get their own access and see whether these tools uh, are useful, uh, useful for them. And that's it from us, really. Um, so we've, we've taken a look at, you know, the introduction tab, bit of background about some of those key themes, the source archives, the document types. Sarah's taken us through some um, some of those 19th century key documents, and I've shown um, some of those 20th century, some of that 20th century material, particularly looking at those uh, those immigrant settler communities. And then we've also looked at some of those uh, some of the functionality, and lastly some of those interactive tools as well. So that's it from us. I'm going to just quickly move over to the questions.